You, finding life pretty dull. You, dreaming again of exotic places, wishing you were somewhere else. We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape with us now to a ship on the high seas and a cargo of mutinous criminals as Western Martyr tells it in his gripping story, A Sleeping Draft. That helps. But it's like I say, you can't forget. You can never forget. It's at night that you think about it, with the water outside rushing past the hull. That's when you think that it can never be the same. You can't trust anybody. Never. Not a soul. I can tell you, you just can't trust them. Not even yourself. What is it, mister? Mr. Finch says he's ready to board, sir. Oh, he is, eh? All right, I'm not stopping him. Uh, Sir? Yeah? He insists on bringing them aboard one at a time. What? Does he think I'm going to miss the tide? There's over 400 of them. It'll take hours. Well, that's what I said, sir, but... I'm captain of this blasted hulk. What she is. But I'll not be told by a slumgullion landsman what to do. Mr. Finch! Come aboard, if you please! I'm sorry, sir. I should have resigned. Stinking, filthy, poor devil cargo. Everything I cockalorum, captain? No, everything is not I cockalorum. What in blazes do you mean ordering my mate about? No offense intended. In none taken, I hope. I want those scurvy wretches aboard now. All of them. You put them below and we'll weigh anchor. One at a time, sir. One at a time. We got to search them. Why didn't you do that before you took them out of jail? There's many a slip, Captain, if you know what I mean. You'd be surprised what those swine can pick up between jail and the docks. It ain't safe. Now, we got to search them. One at a time, and that's a fact. You let me handle this, Captain. It ain't no ordinary cargo, you know. They're murdering devils. Every last one of them. The convicts came aboard, one by one. I watched them. They were going from London to a land they'd never seen. A colony at Bortum, Australia. 400. The sweepings and scrapings sorted out from the muck of the jails with Finch in charge of them. Oh, I've carried dirty cargoes. Die wood, for instance, crawling with scorpions and spiders, not to mention snakes. And then there's cattle. But this, weeks and months at sea with a human cargo who'd as soon cut your throat as spit. And what made it worse was, I felt sorry for the poor beggars. I watched them come aboard until there were two left. Nine. Wilkes is the name. Search him. Yeah, take your bleeding hands off me. I ain't got nothing. I just stole my last father. Shut your jaw. Oh. That's enough, Finch. I won't have the cat used on my ship. I'll get enough of it where they're going. You're a trusting soul you are, Captain. Ah. How would you like that between your ribs? A touch of the cat's a lot better than letting this swine bring a knife aboard, eh? Take him below. I said, all right. Come on. I don't know how they do it. Help me, I don't. You've got to watch for them knives. Next! Right. Cool. He is a terror. Look at the size of him. Dangerous swine. Three murders in Australia. Escaped. He's in for it when he gets back. Nine. Abby. Jonathan Abbey. Abbey. Well, well. A gentleman in chimes. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Worship. Forgive us for daring to lay hands on Your Highness. I'm sure as how you've been wrongly accused. That's enough, Finch. Search him. Then take him below. I want Mr. Jonathan Abbey shackled. He's a prize. We mustn't let anything happen to him. From 
the day we left London docks, I'd taken a violent dislike to Finch. He seemed to be happiest when he was laying about with his cat on the convicts herded like sheep below decks. He kept them quiet enough, but one night I decided to have it out with him in my cabin. Oh, I made it strong, I can tell you, so that even he could understand what I meant. You all finished, Captain? All right. Now, you hear me out. They're a bad lot. Four hundred of them. All banned for Australia and they don't want to go. You follow me? There's that bloke, Abby. As soon as we touch Sydney, the game's up for him. They'll hang him, sure. That doesn't mean that you have the right to make life even worse for them here. Oh, no? If I don't, where do you think we'll be? You, me, your mates. And the crew, well, from what I've seen of them, they're not much better than what's below. You're doing a lot of jawing, mister. I am. What would you do if you were down there? I'll tell you. You'd get hold of this ship and clear out. That's what you'd do. And it'd be easy. They're locked in and we've got a guard. Ah, you don't know them like I do. There's another thing. When I searched them, there was one to five sovereigns stowed away on every man. Earned or stolen. That'll come to over a thousand pounds by my figures. They're entitled to that money. It's little enough to take to a wild country. It's truth, but there's them down there what would slit the gullet of any man for two bob. <laughs> and you asked me to be dainty with them. That's the way he talked to me. You know, I can tell you I didn't feel easy anymore. I did something I hadn't done for a long time. I brought two pistols out from ship's stores and kept them under my pillow. It was when we got round the horn that the first convict died. From scurvy. We had to put him over the side, of course, and there was a lot of grousing. I went down to the hold with Finch. It was hot and stinking. Now you let me talk to them, Captain. I'll put it to rights. You tell them it couldn't be helped. Now don't you mind. I'll tell them. Hey, blimey. Here comes old bloody Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Finch. Did you steal the clothes off the poor beggar's back before you threw them in? <laughs> Man! Man, we ain't man dirty. We're dogs, I haven't you? Yeah, you want to hear me? <laughs> Why don't you wait to bury poor old Smithy in the ground instead of chucking him in the sea? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We've got another two or three weeks before we reach land. I'll make a bargain with you. The next one what dies, now that it's getting nice and hot, I'll leave him down there and you can take care of him and mourn till we get to Australia. <laughs> How's that? How's that? Half a crown, you don't keep him for three days. Ooh, that's old bloody pot. Always a nose for business. <laughs> well, if you ain't satisfied with that, I'll see that the hatch is closed down tight for the rest of the voyage. And you can boil for all of me. That seemed to settle it for a time. I began to see that in spite of Finch's hardness with them, the prisoners knew he was master and behaved themselves. That is... Most of them did, but there were others, and that's what began the trouble. We were two days out of the Cook Islands when it happened. Yes? Captain, Captain, there's a man on deck. We brought him up from below. Oh, it's horrible. It's... Why, what's happened? It's one of the convicts, sir. Oh? oh all that blood, sir. Oh, devil. I tried to do something, but it was too late. By the time we got him up... Fight, eh? Yes, sir. Here we are, Captain. Mr. Darling ain't much of a surgeon, I must well, say. Well, I did what I could. He must have been dead before we got him up here. Why, he's... He's been cut to pieces. Not half he ain't. How did it happen? Oh, I heard him shouting. When I went down in the hold, there he was. Propped up like uh, against the bars. With his arms through, holding him up. He must have been dead. He must have been. Poor devil. Who, him? No, 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 he's dead. There's others in for it, though. What do you mean? Well, how'd you think he got cut up like that? Knives, Captain. Knives. But you searched them before they bought it. I did, and Struth, I don't know how they come to do it. Small knives, Captain. Small knives. We're getting close to Australia. That's what it is. Whoever's got them knives, he's after money. The thousand quid or more what's on this cursed ship. Well, I don't see... Oh, you're a trusting soul, you are, Captain. Maybe there's a dozen of them. Maybe twenty with knives. Follow me? They'll run the others and rob them blind. Gold sovereigns, Captain. You didn't forget, did you? If anybody objects, cut him up in small pieces like him. We've got to go down there and put a stop to it. Yes, I don't think. 
How many guns you got aboard? Two pistols and four muskets. That's a fat lot of good. Oh, well, let's take the sweet with the sour. We can try. There's no harm in that. Mark my words, Captain. Before we get to Sydney, all of us probably will have our thr throats cut. Come on. Finch and I, with two seamen, armed ourselves and went down into the hold and stood outside the bars. The men inside were quiet, very quiet. They just looked at us, dark like. You, men! I'll talk to them. Now listen to me. We know some of you are carrying knives. I want you to throw them out here. Nothing further will be said about it if you do as I say. Well? Captain, dear, my porridge wasn't hot enough this morning. And please, sir, can I have sugar in it tomorrow? <laughs> that ain't the way to talk to this scum. The captain's a gentleman. I'm not. You know me, don't you? He knows you all right. You, Abby. Yes? I have a mind you're the leader down here. <laughs> Good old Abby. <laughs> I'm flattered, Mr. Finch, but you forget I'm shackled to my bunk. You saw to that. You listen to me. I'm giving you till morning to throw them knives out here. Till morning. If every blasted one ain't out of your dirty hands, I'm going to have you flogged. Every ruddy one of you. Fifty lashes. Do you hear me, Mr. Abbey? I'll think about that. <laughs> till morning. Then fifty lashes. You think about that, Mr. Abbey. I didn't think they'd give them to us that easy, Captain. There's going to be trouble, though, with this flogging. There'll be more if we don't get the knives away. <laughs> Good morning, Captain Deer and Mr. Finn. You filthy scum! Where's them knives? Where well, they'll do the most good. All right, all right, I've given you a chance. I've played fair. Now... Uh, Mr. Finn, sir, uh, may I have a word with you? Oh, come to your senses, have you? Uh, bend closer to the bar sir, because what I've got to say, I've got to whisper. Well, what is it? What is it? Mr. Finch. For that, an hundred lashes. Wilkes, I'll take you first and handle the cat myself. Oh, no, sir. No, 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 sir. Why not take uh, him first? He won't feel it like I will. The crowd of men parted suddenly and from out of them was pushed what had once been a man. It fell against the bars, and then no longer with the support of living arms, it slid to the deck. We looked at him, Finch and me. His life had been worth a sovereign, maybe two. He hadn't either now, and the knives were still in the hold with them that had killed him. Tonight, some more of radio's greatest stars check in at CBS, the star's address. The first you'll hear are Amos and Andy, who are going to be on hand with the Kingfish, Shorty the Barber, Algonquin J. Calhoun, and of course, Sapphire. Then, a little later, Red Skelton. With Joey Adams, Eve Arden, Jack Benny, and Corliss Archer already on hand, be sure you add Amos and Andy and Red Skelton to your Sunday night listening date starting tonight over most of these same CBS stations. And now, we return you to Escape. Now, as I see it, we've got to have a council of war, in a manner of speaking. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Finch. There'll be no flogging. Ah, I can see you're the sharper you are. No, no, that's, that's right. Too dangerous. We ain't armed for it, and they're in a nasty mood. Now, we've got to be crafty, same as them. I wish we could spill the whole lot of them overside. Lose your contract for carrying them? Not bloody likely. Now, listen here. I'll get them knives. How? It's Abby behind this. He tells them what's what. Get him out, and the others will come around. Mark my words. Are you going into the hole to get him? No, not yet, not yet. It wouldn't be safe now, not for nobody to go in there, but in four or five days... Uh, after we cut off their water and food, seal the hatch, you see what happens. 
They die. They'll die from the knives, then. But which do you want? They'll be begging you to take the ruddy knives in three days. And if they don't? We tell them to hand over Abby to us. But he's the one to blame for their misfortune. They'll do it. All right. If it's the only way, I'll give the order. But not just yet, Captain. We'll let them sit down there and wonder. Wonder what we're going to do about it. Some of them uh, may get nervous. <laughs> we'll let them wonder a bit. I didn't see Finch the rest of the day. The barometer had fallen suddenly, and with it came a storm. I can tell you I had my hands full for the next 24 hours. There was no time to worry about what was going on in the hold of the ship, but I, I didn't think they'd have much stomach for knifing each other and killing. I was wrong. The next morning, at breakfast, Finch didn't turn up. He didn't turn up at all. We searched the whole ship. And then I went down into the hold. And that's where he was. And he hadn't died quickly. Someone had held him against the bars. And the others had... He hadn't died quickly. Good morning, Captain. Present for you. Who did this? Who did it? I wouldn't waste sleep mourning him, Captain. He was a bully, and no better than us, except that he was outside. Abby, I thought you were shackled. I was, but Mr. Finch kindly supplied the key to unfasten me. You're going to pay for this, <laughs> all of you. Now, where are the knives? <laughs> They're in here, Captain. Had you like to come in and get them? <laughs> You'll pay for this! You're repeating yourself, Captain. Good morning. That blasted convict had dismissed me. Like I was a clerk in an office. And there wasn't anything I could do about it. With Finch out of the way, they knew I was an easy mark. It was the knights that got on my nerves. I could hear things happening, lots of things, and it was awful. Those devils with the knives. And each morning we'd have to pull out six or a dozen, all cut about and bleeding. And most of them died. Those with the knives were getting money. Money they sold from the victims. I began to be afraid of my crewmen. One would take a bribe and let that murdering crowd out. I walked around with two pistols in my jacket all the time. And then, late one afternoon, something very bad happened. I was standing by the wheel. Captain! Captain! Yeah, here, boss. He got out, sir. Got out? Who? Who? The big one, Abby. Uh, two of us were standing guard. We heard a scream. It was Abby. He said he'd been stabbed. Uh, Benson here opened the grill to get him in. Abby bashed him on the head and bolted. What about the others? Oh, I'd got the grill closed in time. They're safe enough. He must be somewhere on the ship, sir. Oh, unless he went overboard. No, not that one. He's up to mischief. You take one of my pistols, mister. Aye, sir. You, Boson, pass out the muskets. I want every inch of this ship searched. If he puts up a fight, shoot him. Do you hear me? Shoot him! The night comes quickly in southern parts. Did you ever try to search a ship at night with lanterns? It's not easy. Too many shadows, too many sounds which could be rats or a murderer who's bigger than what you are and could choke your life out in half a minute. We couldn't find him, but he was somewhere aboard, waiting his time. Because we were short-handed, what with the crew searching, I stood a watch. And I thought about that man who Finch said had committed three murders in Australia. Don't turn around, Captain. Huh? It's only a little knife. Don't move. What do you want? A talk. I've nothing to say to the likes of you. That may be, but I have an offer to make you. An offer? It's not safe here. One of your men will be along. Can we go to your cabin? Do you think I'd trust a man like you, alone? You make it difficult for me. If someone comes, I may have to cut your throat. I'd as soon have it cut on deck. What do you want? All right. 
You know what I'm in for when we reach Sydney. Finch told me I've no pity for you. I'm not asking for pity. I have an offer to make. And I can do no more than listen. The men below are planning to take the ship. I don't think they've got a chance, but they'll be killing. Those that have got the knives have got all the money, too. It's 1,200 pounds. I'm aware of that, mister. I can get the knives for you. Huh? All I want is the chance to get away before the ship docks. How do you know? How do I know? It's not a trick. Turn around, Captain. Huh? Here, my knife. Will that convince you? I'm unarmed. You must have a pistol. You can shoot me if you want. What makes you think that you can get the knives away from them? I can. That's all you need to know, but... But? Will you help me? How can I trust you? I don't know, Captain. Except that I, I think you do. I... I couldn't help you openly. You know that. You were put aboard as a murderer. You're in my charge, and it's my job to turn you over to the police as soon as we arrive. Then... Uh... But... Well, if... If you could get the knives, though, I... Might be able to give you a chance to clear out. That's all I want, the chance. All right. I must have a pistol. What? A pistol. You take me for a fool. No, no, it was the only way to get the knives. I give you this pistol and you shoot me down? <laughs> Not likely. Captain, if I'd wanted to do that, I'd have cut your throat two minutes ago. You're a murderer. I know. You can't have it. It's either them or your ship and probably your life. Well... I, you talk like a gentleman, but suppose you want my pistol so that you can free them. You just have to trust me as I'd trust you to give me a chance to get away. Take it. Here. What about the guards below? They'll shoot. I'll take you down. Say I caught you. How do I get out again when I've got the knives? You send word that you want to see me. It's all right. Captain, I'm trusting you now. I want that chance to get away. We'll talk about it if you get the knives. I'll take you below now and come back tomorrow. Keep your voice low. They think I'm tricking you into making a bargain. They think I stole the pistols. Huh? I told them that I had to have the knives to make you believe that we wouldn't make trouble. I said that we'd take over the ship tonight. What do you want me to do? Leave me the key to the grill. I'll slip out tonight and bring you the knives. They'll want you to let them out, too. No, I won't. I'll lock it. How do I know you will? You don't. You'll have to trust me. Do they know about this plan? All except for the fact that I'm going to lock them in once I'm out. Give me the knives now. No, 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 no. They'd know something was wrong. I'd never get out alive. Give me the key. All right. Here. I mean, tonight. I waited. And I can tell you that I didn't like it. The wind came up a bit and I knew that before sunrise we would be in Sydney. That is, if I should trust a murderer. At 10 o'clock that night, there was a tap on my cabin door. One of your crew nearly caught me coming down here. Well, I've kept my side of the bargain. Yeah. Oh, they're all there. You needn't worry. Here, here's your pistol. You may need it. Huh? Oh, thanks. Now, how do I get away? We'll be in port in about six hours if the wind holds. You stay aft in the longboat. When you hear the anchor go, drop over the side and swim for it. I'll try to anchor as close to land as possible before I take her in. If I can land without being seen, I've got some friends who will hide me. I don't want to know about it. Just remember, when the anchor's lets go, that's your signal. Thank you, Captain. I trust you. And, uh, I'd like to shake hands with you. I took the hand of the murderer, and we shook hands like old friends. And then, he was gone. Two hours later, the wind went down, and in its place came fog. Thick, mucky fog. I had my hands full, not with danger from other ships and the blasted current that knocks you about off the harbor entrance. 
by three o'clock, the fog had shut in properly and the blessed tide ran us all over the place. It was proper dangerous, I can tell you. We were about 15 miles offshore and I didn't like the looks of things. There's shoals there about and I sent the mate for it to heave the lead. I got a proper start when I heard him sing out, By the deep We'd got off course right enough and at this rate we'd shear the bottom clean over. I saw it was high time to bring the ship up and wait until we could see something. Let go of the anchor! Let go of the anchor! Give her 25 fathoms to the water's edge, bosun! Aye, sir! None too soon, sir. She was shoaling fast. Blasted current must be making five knots out to sea. Listen to her. to the longboat. It was empty. He'd heard the signal as the anchor paid out. He couldn't see in the fog and had gone overboard into a five-knot tide running straight out to sea, 15 miles from shore. He trusted me. That's why I tell you, you shouldn't trust anybody. Sometimes it's hard sleeping at night when you hear the water outside and you think that's when it's hard to sleep. Escape is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Today we have brought you A Sleeping Draft by Weston Martyr, adapted for radio by Anthony Ellis, with Ben Wright starred as Captain Godfrey. Featured in the cast were John Dodsworth, Bruce Payne, Anthony Barrett, John Daner, and Lou Krugman. Special music was arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week, escape with us to a train rushing through a European night and a beautiful woman who demands your help. As Anthony Ellis tells it in his exciting story, Roulette. Escape is the first in a series of CBS features recently programmed for your Sunday afternoon listening. Later this afternoon, you'll hear Make Believe Town, a series of dramas set in Hollywood with Mr. Walter Wanger as your host. Later, you will hear on most of these same CBS stations the first Sunday broadcast of Arthur Godfrey's Digest, a half hour of the cream of wit and humor from the Redhead's weekday show on CBS. Earn Your Vacation also returns to CBS this Sunday afternoon, and starting next Sunday, Frank Sinatra checks in again at CBS, the star's address, with his new hour-long radio program, so be sure to listen for Frank Sinatra. Stay tuned now for Make Believe Town with Mr. Walter Wanger as your host, which follows over many of these same stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS, where you enjoy the contented hour every Sunday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 